In a previous video we looked at how to identify blood vessels on histology slides. Today I want to go through some structures that you might confuse with blood vessels and how to avoid those traps. If you want a review of normal blood vessel structure you can check out the first video on the channel. This is a section of lung from a calf and in the lung there are lots of tubular structures that you might confuse with blood vessels. If we look at this section here we can clearly see an artery here and lots of veins. We can tell that they're arteries and veins because of their structure and mainly because they've got lots of red blood cells in them. But then we have this structure just to one side. It's round with a lumen. It's got some blood cells in the middle. You might confuse it with a blood vessel. But this is in fact a bronchus, one of the larger airways. There are a couple of ways that we can tell it apart from a blood vessel. Firstly, the epithelium is columnar and it has these little tufty bits at the top which are cilia. If we compare that to a normal blood vessel, so this one at the side, the epithelium is just a single layer of squamous endothelial cells. The second clue is that in the wall of this luminous structure we have this material here with quite round to elongated cells in a kind of glassy type blue matrix. This is cartilage which also signals this structure as a bronchus. If we have a quick look at this other structure here, this is now a bronchiole which you might confuse with a blood vessel. It has a lumen and it's quite round so why is it not a blood vessel? Well, the key is in the epithelium again. We have this columnar to cuboidal epithelium with uh, a little bit of fuzz on it, so ciliated. And if we compare that to the epithelium or the endothelium of this blood vessel here, it's squamous with little dark elongated nuclei. Well, you might say, well, that was easy because in all the bronchies and the bronchioles, there were no red blood cells really, whereas the arteries and veins were packed full of them. So I thought I'd show you a real example. Uh, this is a section of lung that I took from a squirrel that was uh, killed in a road traffic accident, so it got hit by a car, uh, and its lungs are quite hemorrhagic. And if we zoom in on this structure here, how can we tell if it's a blood vessel or a bronchus or a bronchiole? It's full of this fluid, which might be plasma, it might be edema, it's got some red blood cells in it. Well, as I said before, the key is the epithelium. Here we have this uh, quite cuboidal to columnar epithelium. It's not so ciliated, you might, you might be convinced that there's some cilia here. Compare that to this structure here. This is definitely a blood vessel. It has lovely squamous, like this nucleus here, that one endothelium rather than a cuboidal epithelium. And another good example from this slide, here we have uh, a blood vessel, uh, which is cut in slightly oblique angle. Uh, with smooth muscle in its wall. Maybe you can just make out a few endothelial cells there lining the lumen. And next to it, we have a, a bronchiole with cuboidal to columnar epithelium lining it, which you might confuse with a blood vessel because both of them are packed full of red blood cells. The, the artery because they should be there and the bronchiole because it's full of hemorrhage. Okay, so let's have a look at some skin now. This is a section of cheek skin from a cat. And if we look around, there are lots of structures with lumens that we might think were blood vessels. So if we zoom in, for example, on this section here, we can see a lumen here, lumen here, lumen here, another one here. But these are not blood vessels. These are apocrine glands within the skin. So how can we tell? Well, again, the key is in the epithelium. We have a nice columnar epithelium with large round nuclei, and there's no smooth muscle around the wall of this structure. Uh, over here, we have a very small blood vessel that we can compare it to. It's got red blood cells in the lumen, uh, and then it's got that lovely squamous endothelium to to define it as a blood vessel. This section as well here is quite nice at showing the difference. So 
here we have an apocrine gland which you might confuse with an arteriole like this one okay so let's have a little look at the differences uh, you would probably confuse the apocrine gland epithelium with the smooth muscle of the arterial wall but if we have a little look at the nuclei of the smooth muscle they're more elongated cigar shaped whereas the epithelium of the apocrine gland is definitely round and then lining this there's no further layer of cells which defines this as the epithelium whereas if we have a quick shifty over to the arterial we can see a couple of endothelial cell nuclei like this one here this one here lining the inside of the lumen of the arterial so this is another piece of skin uh, this time from a squirrel in fact the same squirrel that we took the section of lung from before and if we zoom in on the skin there are more luminate structures we don't have apocrine glands in this section but there's a couple of other things that you might confuse with blood vessels you know these structures here you might confuse particularly this one here with a blood vessel because it has some red stuff in the middle this is the keratin of the hair shaft and then surrounding it is this kind of layer of uh, epidermis that you might confuse with the smooth muscle of a of an artery so this is the best arterial that I could find in the section just for a comparison to the hair follicle uh, so we have a lumen here with the red blood cells in it and you can make out the endothelium and if you look at the smooth muscle layer it's it's very different to the epidermis of the hair follicle in that although you have multiple layers of cells the nuclei are a very different shape okay one final structure that you might confuse with a blood vessel uh, this is a section of kidney from a sheep that died of uh, heart failure but it also had a little bit of nephritis so if we zoom in on the kidney we can see that there's a glomerulus here but then the rest of the parenchyma is going to be renal tubules mixed with blood vessels and we kind of need to be able to differentiate between the tubules and, and the blood vessels and sometimes they can look quite similar so for example if we look at this section uh, I can see an arterial a vein and uh, tubules around it uh, so the vein has endothelial cells not much of a smooth muscle layer but it does have a lumen with some red blood cells and, and some plasma in it uh, and here's the arterial with some endothelial cells and a small layer of smooth muscle around it and you can appreciate that it's you know slightly different from the tubules again mainly because of the epithelium so here's a tubule that's kind of falling to bits uh, the tubular epithelium tends to be cuboidal with round nuclei which distinguishes it from the the endothelium of, of arteries and veins and then sometimes it's an absolute mess and it's really difficult to tell what's going on so for example uh, this is an area of nephritis so an area of pathology here's a tubule that's filled with a, a protein cast uh, and that lots of the cells have necrosed and filled the tubule with protein it's lined by these cells which you might confuse with endothelial cells but they're uh, kind of attenuated renal tubular epithelium uh, and then just next to it for example here's a here's a blood vessel here red blood cells and a couple of inflammatory cells in the lumen with uh, some real endothelium there lining it but it can be very difficult which is why of course we have stuff like immunohistochemistry so that's it for now i hope you're all clued up on how to spot blood vessels on histology slides now thanks for watching and until next time goodbye